to set up Windows 2000 Professional on PC Emulator, we need a few things. First of all, you want to download PCM version 17, which is still the latest version as of 2025. And then you want to download the ROMs. After that, you want to download the Voodoo 3 or DirectX 8 or the Intel chipsets in case it wasn't pre-installed for, say, which I do believe is pre-installed. And it's got Windows 2000 and then the 3D Mark 3 2000 mint. And then you want to download PC Emulator. And after that, you want to extract. But if you wanted to find these download resources, look at the link below my description. And again, we're going to extract. And after that, the next step you want to do is to scroll down, hit copy, set up files, and then you want to go to ROMs, paste it. And then your ROMs has been pasted in, in there to the ROMs file. And after that, we can open up the emulator. So you want to click on new, and then you want to type in Windows. 2000 click OK and then you want to change the machine to the uh, slot 1 gigabyte G8686BX and to me I'm going to set it up as the Intel Pentium 450 which is number Intel Pentium 2 450 MHZ and I'm going to set the device to 3DFX Voodoo 3 3000 Tick Guru Graphics and then you want to change texture memory size to 4 megabytes along with frame buffer memory size. Click it OK. And after that, set the device to uh, Sign Blaster PCI128 in which Windows 2000 should hopefully come pre-installed with. After that, you want to set the FDD to none. FDD1 to 3.5 inch. And then you want to set the mouse to Intel Microsoft Intelli Mice PS slash 2 New Drive Set it to Dynamic Size VHD And then you want to set it to I'm going to say 10 gigabytes for this Folder And then you want to type in Win 2000 10 gigabytes Click Save And then you want to click OK Drive created. Remember to partition and format the new drive. After that, click OK. And then we're going to start it up. Which it is. We're now starting up the uh, emulator. Which is going to take a bit of time. Updating ESCD, which is success. And verifying DMI pool data. Update success. Disk boot failure. So we're going to have to load image. And then you want to go on Windows 2000 Professional. Click that. Click Open. Hard Reset. Press Stell to enter Setup. And then we're going to set the BIOS features to uh, CD-ROM. And then installing it to C. Get Plug and Play pre-installed. And then Save and Exit Setup. And then hopefully it should start the Windows 2000 installation. Verifying DMI pull data. And setup is just inspecting your computer's hardware configuration. This is similar to as you were if you were installing Windows NT. But we're installing Windows 2000 on your emulator. And setup is just loading files. And setup is now starting Windows 2000 now. And then we're going to press enter to start setup. C to continue. F8 for I agree. Press and enter for. And then we're going to format the partition using the NTFS file system. And setup is now formatting. It's a good thing now that if you use more gigabytes for installing Windows 2000 you can install it easily unlike Windows NT where you have to just use less than 2 gigabytes
And now it's checking the hard drive C. And it's set up again is now copying files. So we're just waiting while set up copies files to the Windows 2000 installation folders. And this may take several minutes to complete. And now I set up has just finished copying files, so it's saving configuration. So now we need to restart the computer. And after that, the next step you want to go to is to press Dell to enter setup. Go to BIOS features. And then you want to set the boot sequence to C only. And then you want to save and exit setup. Press Y to save. And it's starting Windows. And now we're just starting up Windows 2000, which came out in 1999, which also marks uh, that it was about to become the year 2000. Now it says, please wait. Welcome to the Windows 2000 Setup Wizard. So the install wizard installs Windows 2000 Professional on your computer. Click Next. And it says, please wait while Setup detects and installs devices such as your keyboard and mouse. This will take several minutes. During this time, your screen may flicker for a few seconds. Taking a while to for setup to in install. It's taking a while to install devices. It's slow and steady, but during this time, after this blue bar fills up, reaches that line, the next step we're going to show you is how we to uh, go for the next stages of setup. Okay, so the system local and user locals how contact numbers currencies and dates appear. Now this is set to United States which we're not in because if you're living outside of the US you want to set it to a different country like the area I'm already in is United Kingdom so I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to leave it as English click apply and then after that you want to set it to United Kingdom and then you want to set that to uh, English UK and set it as default and then I'm going to remove United States click apply Windows could not remove United States so it should be removed next time and then after that you want to click apply click OK the system local is still set to UK and uh, US I meant go to advance so after that you want to scroll down and look for a uh, time input locals and I'm going to set it as United Kingdom which it is and then click next and I'm going to give the name oh, set up continue until you enter your name click OK and type PCM tutorial and then click next and now you need to enter in the product key where you would have to but look on search on Google for the product key but I'm not going to tell you what the product key is okay after that I'm going to give the computer name PCM and then I'm going to type in the administrator password confirm password next oh the passwords you entered did not match click next and I'm going to set this to uh, GMT, which is located here. Next. And now, we just have to wait while Windows installs networking components. It's just taking a while to install all the components, but now it's just installing the start menus and then going to register components, and then it's going to save settings, and then it should remove any temporary files used. So, 
Windows 2000 was a moderation of Windows NT 4.0, which brought many of the desktop changes, including Active Desktop to Microsoft's NT line. Four editions of Windows 2000 were released. Professional, Server, Advanced Server, Data Center Server, and improvements over NT 4.0 include any new accessibility options, increased language and local support, NTFS, free Point zero, the encrypting file system and Active Directory. Windows 2000 was the first to plan replace, was first planned to replace both Windows 98 and Windows NT 4.0. Although, although using the NT kernel for consumer and professional editions would not happen until Windows 2000 successor XP. Now. Windows 2000 was a business-oriented operating system released by Microsoft on the 17th of February 2000, and it marked a major step forward in stability and secure to its presenters. And it's also built on the Windows NT kernel, not on MS-DOS, making it far more stable than Windows 95 or 98, or the notoriously buggy Windows Millennium Edition, targeted at professional and enterprise users, not casual home users or gamers, but it's only for profession. It's only f used for business users, of course. If you're for Windows 2000, and it came in several editions, professional, and of course, it re Windows NT does require at least 1.33 MHz CPU and 64 megabytes, which was the modest even then, and it ran legacy software in isolated memory spaces to prevent system-wide crashes. Some older software struggled due to the new version of Windows NT 5.0, causing capacity hiccups. It oft and for the legacy, it, it is often called a forgotten masterpiece because it laid the groundwork for Windows XP and beyond. While not flashly, it was fast, secure and dependable, a favourite among IT professionals. And if you're into retro technology operating system history, Windows 2000 is a fascinating milestone and want to dive into how it compares to XP. Okay, so how does Windows 2000 compare to XP? Windows 2000 and Windows XP are closely related. XP is essentially Windows 2000 with a fresh coat of paint and a few extra bells and whistles, but the differences go deeper than just looks. Windows 2000, although, is leaner and uses fewer resources, great for older hardware. Windows XP is more friendly user and compatible with a wider range of software and peripherals. And it's also been the best Windows operating system for gaming, multimedia or general use. Because XP wins with better compatibility and features. And it's been the most popular Windows operating system since the 2000s. But sadly, support for Windows XP has come to a close and ended on the 8th of April 2014, which was 11 years ago. But sadly, Windows 2000 and Windows XP are long past their official support lifespans. Windows 2000 mainstream support ended on the 30th of June 2005, which was 20 years ago, and it ended on the 13th of July 2010, which will last 15 years ago. After that, no more security patches or updates, patches or official help from Microsoft. It's now considered a legacy operating system, mostly used in niche retro setups or isolated industrial temps. And Windows XP mainstream support ended on the 14th of April 2009, which was 16 years ago, and extended support ended on the 8th of April 2014. And after Windows XP support ended, nearly all schools went to Windows 7 Enterprise schools, offices, and buildings for businesses users because some enterprise users paid for custom support beyond that, but for the general public, XP has been out of the safety zone for over a decade. That means no official updates and it's vulnerable to modern threats. So now we've just completed the in Windows 2000 setup wizard. Click finish. And we're restarting the computer. So now we've just finished setting up. 
So now, next thing we're going to do is click next. And we're going to need to complete a night now loading personal settings. Good thing it's got the sound built in and the video card already built in. Which means you don't have to install the Intel chipsets or install the Voodoo 3DFX. Voodoo. No, thank you. I don't want to show this on startup. We'll click exit. And now you have it. Windows 2000 has finally been installed. Go to my computer. Properties. And I'm going to go to device manager. And you can definitely now see it's got the 3DFX Voodoo 3 3000 pre-installed now. Which is good. And the Intel chipset's already pre-installed. And that's it, Sky. So I hope you do find this tutorial very, very useful. And I hope you enjoyed my review on the Windows 2000 setup during the installation. So if you have any questions, please leave your comments below. And don't forget to like your videos and hit the... Please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. So if you're thinking of running either operating systems today, maybe for retro gaming or software preservation, it's best to keep them offline and in virtual machines for safety. And if you want help setting up that up or exploring alternatives that still feel retro uh, but are more secure. So thank you guys and I'll see you again in the next tutorial. Bye!